In today's blog, we're going to look at the different types of compensation available in some of the finishing 2D toolpaths. Mastercam provides five compensation types, computer, control, wear, reverse wear, and off. Compensation settings are available in toolpaths that have a finishing pass option, such as contour, pocket, dynamic contour, slot, etc. Compensation is not available in roughing specific toolpaths, such as dynamic mill or area mill. It is also not available in facing, drill, or any of the wireframe toolpaths. Compensation is used to offset the toolpath from the selected geometry depending on the diameter or radius of the cutter. The tool can be offset to the left or right of the geometry relative to the direction of travel. Typically on CNC machines, a climb milling cut is preferred. This is achieved by offsetting the tool to the left of the geometry. The default compensation direction in Mastercam is left. Keep in mind this can be changed if a conventional type of cut is required. For these example toolpaths, I'm going to make a few adjustments just to make the differences in them easier to see. On the cut parameters page, I'm going to switch the roll cutter around corners to none. And on the lead in out page, a few adjustments here to simplify this motion. These settings will result in a straight lead into and out of the cut and straight X and Y movements around the part. The first compensation type we will look at is computer. With this setting, Mastercam will create the toolpath position relative to the center of the cutter. In this sample file, I have a boss to profile which is 3 inches long in X and 2 inches tall in Y. Datum is located in the middle of this boss. If I use a 1 inch end mill to cut this part with computer compensation, notice the first Y location in the backplot menu. Y minus 1.5. The bottom edge has a location of Y minus 1, and then adding the radius of the cutter to that, which is 1 inch divided by 2, so half inch radius, the result is Y minus 1.5. Stepping around this profile, you can see the positions are relative to where the center of the cutter would be when cutting this shape. If this toolpath is then posted into G code, Notice there are no G41 or G42 codes output, just straight X and Y movements. Keep in mind, to cut this part correctly, the same size tool that was used in Mastercam must be used on the CNC machine. There is also no way to compensate for the final size of the part or wear of the tool. If you need to be able to adjust the size of the machine parts or be able to use different tools, one of the other compensation types must be used. The next compensation type is control. Switching this operation to the control compensation type will allow adjustments to the cutter size being used as well as adjusting the parts final size if the tool wears during production. With the toolpath rebuilt, running through a back plot, right away you notice that the locations being generated are from the actual location of the part, not the center of the cutter. If this toolpath is then posted to G-code, notice the addition of the G41D1 on the lead-in movement. G41 is the code for tool compensation left. The next lines of code are the actual position of the profile, followed by a G40. This cancels tool compensation and is applied on the lead-out of the toolpath. Using control requires that the tool's diameter, or radius depending on your machine, needs to be input into the offsets for this tool. Different tool diameters can be used with the program now, not just the size that was used in Mastercam. We could cut this feature with a half inch end mill, or even a reground tool that might be 0.603 inches in diameter, as long as that info is input into the offset for this tool. The wear field can also be used to make fine adjustments to the final size of the part. Putting in a negative wear value will result in more material being cut. A positive number will result in less material being cut. The next two compensations are pretty much the same. They kind of combine computer and control. Switching this up over to wear first, running through a back plot, we see similar positions as was generated with computer. These are center of cutter compensated. 
posting into G code, we again see the G41 D1 being applied on the lead in movement, followed by positions that are relative to the center of cutter. Since this toolpath is generated at the center of cutter, the same tool used in Mastercam must be used on the machine, but since we have the addition of G41 compensation, we are able to use the wear field. On your machine control, you would set the tool's geometry offset to zero, and then the wear field can be used to adjust the final size of the cut feature. When using wear, inputting a negative wear value will cut more material, a positive will cut less material. Switching this op over to reverse wear, the back plot looks identical to what we saw in wear. Posting to G-code will show the difference. We now have a G42 D1 on the lead-in movement. G42 is tool compensation to the right. Since this toolpath again is generated at the center of cutter, the same tool used in Mastercam must be used on the machine, but since we have the addition of a G42 compensation, we are able to use the wear field. However, the wear field for a reverse wear op will have the opposite effect of a wear op. Here, a negative wear value will cut less material and a positive offset will cut more material. Keep in mind the geometry field for the reverse wear will also be set at zero. The last compensation type is off. With this setting, Mastercam will not compensate at all for the tool being used. The path generated is relative to the geometry selected. Posting G-code shows no output of G41 or G42 either. Values input into the diameter or wear offsets on the CNC machine will not affect this toolpath. Typically, application of this setting would be for engraving when offsetting of the toolpath is not desired. A few things to keep in mind when using compensation. First, it is very important that no matter the compensation type chosen, the diameter and wear offsets on the CNC machine must be set up relative to the compensation type used. Number two, some machines will not allow compensation to be applied to a G2 or G3 arc move. You may need to ensure the first move the cutter makes is a straight line. This can be controlled on the lead in and lead out page. Number three, when using control compensation, some machines will also require that the first line movement while applying the compensation is at least as big as the radius of the tool. For example, if you're using a one inch cutter, the line of code applying the G41 or G42 must make a move that is at least half of an inch long. This concludes our look into the different types of compensation used in Mastercam.